to create some momentum, Oklahoma hoping to gain some momentum, playing good ball on both sides of the plate, on the field, and at the bat. Let's look back at last night, a win for Oklahoma. They got things going in the first inning on a two-run home run from Jana Johns, and then Nicole May in the circle through a one-hitter dominant victory for the Sooners. Oklahoma offense playing well, one through nine, all the way top to bottom, really showing what they can do early in the season. Nicole May allowed one infield hit to Janaya Thomas. She was excellent. And Oklahoma capitalized on eight walks from Houston pitching. It's mistakes after mistakes, and, and you can't have those against great teams like Oklahoma. They'll capitalize, and it'll go on from there. Here we go. Tiara Jennings stands in against Kenna Wilkie. First pitch. This is in. Wilkie gets the start. It's Jennings, Coleman, and Allo atop the order for Oklahoma here in the first. Wilkie pitched game two last night for Houston, a loss to McNeese. Wanting to get ahead here. Sticking her claim on the inside of the plate there. You see where she's trying to go. Um, hoping she etches one out and, and, and gets ahead at some point uh, in these first few batters. Pitch is just up. Three balls, no strikes. Here is the Oklahoma lineup for Patty Gasso. Allo hit two home runs earlier today. She's at 92 in her career. Another star for Alyssa Brito in left. She had her first home run. Patty Gasso now in her 27th season. 3-0 count. And that finds the strike zone. Three balls, one strike. Wilkie showing early. She's able to keep that off-speed ball in there for a strike. That could be dangerous for the Oklahoma lineup uh, as the game continues here. Kenna Wilkie was outstanding last weekend, beating Texas Tech. That's outside. It's a five-pitch walk drawn by Tiari Jennings. Still early in the game here. Just the first batter on, but it's the walks like this where it got a little difficult for the for the Houston uh, defense yesterday. Oklahoma just showed over and over how able, how well they were able to capitalize uh, on, on situations like this. There's the numbers for the season. It's her fourth start today. Transfer from Northwestern where she pitched in two NCAA tournaments. Here's Coleman from the left side. Pitches away. One ball, no strikes. Coleman batted second against Ignis off to a great start after her outstanding freshman campaign. Allo had been batting second earlier this season. They moved her to third. Good speed. With Jennings and Coleman atop the order for Oklahoma. Small change for Oklahoma, moving Allo down to third uh, in the lineup. But with, with as much talent as they've proven to have sprinkled from the top four to the bottom uh, five, you know, Coleman has definitely earned the spot uh, at number two there, and, and, and Allo's not going to miss a beat, no doubt, uh, coming in at third. Coleman, a homer, and an RBI double, and the decisive game three win over Florida State in the Champ Series last year. One ball, two strikes on Coleman. Kenna Wilkie started against McNeese last night. Five innings, nine hits, five runs, two walks, two strikeouts. Not as good as we saw her last weekend, and McNeese just did a great job putting balls in play. <laughs> no kidding, I think that's an understatement there. McNeese just as scrappy as they were playing last night and as scrappy as they've always played, really applying pressure and, and forcing the Houston uh, lineup and roster and defense to, uh, to perform. Good pitch, Coleman. Swings and misses her first strikeout of the season in her 20th at bat. Look at that. Oh, just reaching the ball, just tails up on her outside, a little high. Great pitch coming from Wilkie in the mound. Nice swing, just need to keep the head on the ball. Choose good pitches there. Very tough to strike out Oklahoma for the season. 30 walks drawn at the plate, 23 strikeouts as a team. Now it's Jocelyn Allo. She takes ball one, three for three with two home runs earlier today against McNeese. Now she's three home runs away from tying the all-time NCAA record career home runs held by former Sooner Lauren Chamberlain. Chamberlain had 95. And that hits Allo on the elbow. Yep, comes right in on her. Allo shaking it off, no doubt, a little bit of pain there, but that's what they make those really sturdy 
elbow guards for, and she's happy sitting on first base. Foot down, ball just tails in. Right in on there. Oh, looks like maybe the wrist rather than the elbow, but nonetheless, on base is on base. She helps her team with another bat. Now it's Janet Johns. Had a two-run shot in the first inning against Houston yesterday. And an eight-nothing win. Senior off to a great start. Eight hits and 18 at bats. And excellent third base. That play she made yesterday, the ball popped out of her glove. She grabbed it immediately through from her stomach for the out. Anna Johns is just playing phenomenal on both sides of the ball through these two games. And with this foul uh, against Houston here in Cougar Stadium. But gosh, her focus, her, her, her discipline is just shining so, so strong. That player talking yesterday, hot ball straight to her at third base. She has to dive, the ball pops out of her glove grabs it, makes a great throw, cool, calm, collected, and, and just enjoying the game. So we expect nothing but, but, but you know, greatness out of her um, from this Oklahoma roster. One and one the count. Two balls, one strike. Katie Bear Brown did a good job to keep that from going to the backstop. Yeah. A wild pitch yesterday that scored two as part of a four-run first inning. That's right, Oklahoma coming out quick, coming out hot, you know. They've done that in each game they've played here uh, at, at Houston Cougar Stadium. And, you know, this game is, is so, you know, they already got two on base here with one out. We'll see what happens. Nice off-speed pitch, two and two. One thing that does look like is staying true is, is the patience. It, it, they've proven that. Um, Oklahoma has proven that already is, is the patience that they're taking that mindset to the plate, taking deep breaths, staying collected, and, and going for what they believe they can hit and hit hard. So far, it's working. Jennings at second, Allo at first. Swing and a miss, second strikeout. And look at the celebration from Kenna Wilkie after she got Johns to chase. That was a great pitch coming from Wilkie. I'm telling you, these rise balls, the way, the way some of these pitchers are working on these rise ball, watch. She winds it up, and as she releases that ball, it comes at the waist and just, whew, sails right out of the zone and, and Johns knew it as soon as she let go of that back hip. Oh, she'll be waiting on that one the next day back. There's Kinsey Hanson and we see the relationship building between Wilkie and Katie Ray Brown. They really pump each other up. The battery mates up and in for a ball. That's the same pitch there for the Kenny Wilkie hoping we can get another chase. Hanson a little bit more disciplined first pitch of her back. But yes, Katie Ray Brown and Kenny Wilkie just feeding off of each other. The, the energy they give each other is, is electric and it just bleeds into the rest of the team. There's a line drive to left, hit well, and gone. Kinsey Hansen with two outs, took the low pitch, hits it onto the berm, and the Sooners jump in front. A three-run shot for Kinsey Hansen. What a dig. Looks like that one maybe came in low on her. And Got the barrel on the bat, took it for a ride. Pure muscle strength. We'll see it here. Leg up, bottom half already in it from the jump. Dug it out from the ankle. Straight over that left field fence. Is that a bad pitch? It's it's pretty low. It's over the plate, <laughs> but I don't think that's a very bad pitch from Kenawoki. It's a good pitch from Kenawoki, but just a better swing from Henson at the plate. Three nothing Sooners as Taylor Snow stands in from the left side. Typically after a home run, you'd like to see your pitcher um, get ahead in the count there, looking to see something to hit with that first or second pitch of this at bat. Keep an eye on Wilkie, see if she settles in. Snow two for three with a run and an RBI earlier today. Had a double and drove in a run. Critical part of last year's championship winning team. She came back, fought through a finger injury to play in the champ series. Line drive to third off the glove of Thomas. She picks it up and will not make a throw. Put the ball in play. Gave herself an opportunity to get on and challenge the defense to make a play. And it worked out for 
He worked out at the plate for the batter, but good for Janiah Thomas at third base to recognize, okay, it, it, it kicked off the glove there and ran away from me and to just to not make the throw. How do you make a bad situation worse? You make a bad throw, throw it into the stand. So good for her to hold on there. Grace Lyons now takes the ball. One of five returning All-Americans on this Oklahoma team which won the national title last season. It's her fourth straight season as the starting shortstop for Oklahoma. Was on the team in 2019 that lost to UCLA in the Champ Series. Played down a squeeze bunt in the 8 0 win over McNeese earlier today. Yeah, she's a role player and she knows exactly what her role is and it's to pump up this team. Pinch her inside there. Squeeze away from the ball. She's up there to hit. That's what she wants to do. That's what we're here for. She knows what she's looking for up there, but one of the best shortstops in the game at the moment. I mean, just a talent coming out of lines and at the plate being able to do her job, lay down bunts and, and put some power behind the ball. Line drive to left, falls in front of Bush for a hit. Snow was running on the pitch. And uh, Sooner's not going quietly with two outs. All right, got her barrel in the ball and just kind of muscles that one right out to left field. Hit it where they're not. Smacking between the five, six hole there. Turns on it, got a little high on her, but got her hands right where they needed to be and gets herself on base, advances her teammate to second. Lacey Waldrop, second year pitching coach, out to the circle to speak with Wilkie, former USA Softball National Player of the Year, three-time All-American at Florida State. On the coaching staff at Duke for a couple of years before going to private pitching with Softball Rebellion, and now with Coach Vesley for her second season, and only one returning pitcher in Megan Lee. That's right. Um, a lot of different, a lot of new faces in the bullpen for Houston this year. Um, but, you know, when Coach Vesley talks about uh, Coach Waldrop, you know, she's with the pitchers 24-7. She understands them athletically and emotionally and, and caters to that and, and tries to pull the best out of them that she can. Um, it's nice um, for programs to have pitching coaches that, you know, are fully invested into their, into their staff, um, not only athletically, but in the mind, the mental game as well. Alyssa Brito stands in, her second straight start in left field. Hit her first home run with Oklahoma earlier today against McNeese. Part of the all Pac-12 freshman team and all defensive team last year at Oregon. Reps and foul pass third. A little early in the ball, but not a bad sign. She's telling uh, Wilkie right now that that inside the plate, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to be right there waiting for you. Rito, very versatile already this season, has played left field, third base, shortstop, first base, and serve as a pinch runner. One ball, two strikes. Showing some discipline there, fighting off the inside pitch early in the count, holding off on that rice ball. It was a nice rice ball coming from the mound that time, um, but the discipline to be able to hold off as a, as a, as a, as a batter and you know, when that rise ball leaves the hand, it's coming at the waist. It's coming right at the waist, and you got to keep your head up and, and recognize the spin. It's going to be over your head when it gets to you. Pop foul and out of play. Wilkie was one out away from escaping the inning without any runs. But then Hansen took that low pitch at the knees, out to left for a homer, and Snow an infield single, Lions a hit. Three straight of reach with two outs. That's right. I mean, two runners on base there. I think both runners were mistakes. I think we had a walk and a hit by pitch on base at that home run. So understanding how detrimental those mistakes can be. Could be the 1-0 ball game right now, but, you know, I think it was a five-pitch leadoff walk and then a hit by pitch on Jocelyn Allo. I mean, one swing puts Oklahoma ahead 3-0 in the top of the first. One and two the count on Brito. Fouled off. With the three runs here in the first, Oklahoma has now outscored its opponent 66 to two. 
through the first nine games. <laughs> you know, with already a really good pitching staff um, who's, who's proving themselves each game near perfect is what the numbers show. It only, it only helps to have a lineup, one through nine, that is able to have your back. They are showing up at the plate and defensively to be able to hold their opponents to two runs over seven or eight games here. You know, that's, that's good stuff this early in the season, just weekend two of some, of some live play and, you know, showing a well-rounded situation here for the Oklahoma program. Good battle here. Kenna Wilkie, transfer from Northwestern, and Elisa Brito, the transfer from Oregon. This will be the eighth pitch of the at-bat. Laying off of an off-speed pitch there. That was a good one. The stadium gets quiet at that moment. Everybody was thinking it, but no, it's just outside of the zone. Brito knew exactly what she was doing when she saw that pitch. We'll see if Wookie comes back with it again, try to stop her at the knees. Great crowd on hand. Looks like a sellout inside Cougar Softball Stadium. Out to left. Bush has a beat on it, and she makes the catch. But the Sooners rally with two outs. Kinsey Hansen, the All-American, with a three-run shot off Kenna Wilkie with two outs. And then another rally from Oklahoma. Houston coming up, trailing by three runs. Bottom of the first inning from Houston. Pat Peterson with the former Houston infielder, Jalen Baldridge. Sell out crowd at Cougar Softball Stadium. Day two of the Houston Classic. And Jordy Ball, the freshman, looked awesome last weekend, beating UCLA. Gets a chance to face Houston for the first time this afternoon. Jordy Ball making a name for herself so early here in her Oklahoma collegiate career. Feisty on the mound, fiery types of her teammates, just a different mentality as a freshman, unlike, you know, many others in her same spot here. Here's the lineup for Coach Vesley. Becca Schulte is back. She's at second base hitting fit, did not play yesterday. Bush, Thomas, and Matthews for Kristen Vesley in her sixth season. Bush ready from the left side against Jordy Ball. It's the outside for a strike. Jordy Ball trying to get ahead early here and doing so just fine. Got a strong approach on the mound. Lots of movement, big routine. Can be a little distracting for the hitters, but she's in the zone. Jordy Ball for the season. It's her third start, fifth appearance, 16 innings, just five hits allowed. No earned runs, four walks, and 28 strikeouts. Got a little off speed there. She's hitting that right side, uh, the right hand side of the plate for a left handed batter, so the third base side there, and then follows that up with a you know, nice off speed pitch. Looks like Bethany, Bethany Bush at the plate, just trying to feel her out a little bit, doing what a leadoff batter should do. Just low last week. 14 strikeouts and a complete game win over number three, UCLA. Most strikeouts by a suitor freshman since 2010. 
Here are the numbers, 24 strikeouts in 12 and two-thirds innings last weekend. Gosh, that's incredible. Making her time, making the most of her time. Bush offered at it on 2-2. She goes down on strikes. Working efficiently. Bethany, Bo Bethany Bush not able to pull that bat back and you know, a little unsure on that high pitch. We talk about that rise ball. Oh, she wishes she could have it back. Just couldn't hold off. And she knew it. As soon as she walked off, she knew it. Yep. Wilson, NFCA D1 Pitcher of the Week after shutting down the Bruins last weekend in Irvine, California. Nia Thomas swings to the first pitch, fouls it back. Tonight, Thomas in the box has been hungry. She's not been afraid. She's a freshman, a lot of preseason accolades uh, in the American Athletic Conference, and she's shown that she's not afraid to get out there. She's going to put the bat on the ball and uh, give her team the opportunity to have her on base and, and, and produce some runs following it. 0-2 on Thomas. Jordy Ball on the mound, such a long stride, a long, powerful stride coming off of the rubber there. And she prowls around the mound like a, like a caged animal almost, the way that she commands the circle. It's, it's, it's different, and you know it's, it's a part of that star power that she's already proclaiming. Foul back, good protection from Thomas on 0-2. Ball started yesterday against McNeese in a run roll victory. Three and a third innings, no hits, six strikeouts, and just one walk issue. Just prowling around the back of that mound in the center of the field, letting everyone know that, you know, marking her territory on those. This is incredible to watch. Let's see if she delivers here. Whew. Flaming Thomas there with the off-speed pitch just fans at it. It looked like Thomas maybe saw it coming a little bit. Um, and once she recognized it, she just let the hands go and maybe tried to live for the next pitch, hoping she tapped it, but just a little over the ball. Timing was okay. L.A. Matthews now. Bases empty, two outs in the Houston first. Late on a fastball, Matthews off to a great start her first season in Houston after transferring from Penn State. Eight hits and 15 at bats. A couple doubles, four driven in. Matthews, best I can say there is the effort. Her effort just shows and shows again and again, especially through the games yesterday uh, for the Houston uh, defense. Ball keeping it away from the lefties. Staying outside on it. Second game of the day for Oklahoma. Hope Troutwine, the newcomer from North Texas, threw a no-hitter earlier today. Faced one batter over the minimum. Only blemish was a walk as Oklahoma beat McNeese 11-0. Line drive foul between Johns and Christian Vesley, third base coach. In the circle there, yeah, unfazed, you know, getting ahead with some strikes here early in the count, early in the game. Just the number three batter here to face for the Oklahoma Sooners uh, defense. Making people miss, making the batters miss, giving them some tough pitches to make decisions on. They're making them. Swing and a miss, Matthews down on strikes. Jordy Ball strikes out the side in the bottom of the first. We go to the second. Sooners leading 3 0.
A full house inside Cooper Softball Stadium for day two at the Houston Classic. Oklahoma leads Houston 3 0 as Kenny Wilkie goes back to the circle. She'll face 9 1 and 2, beginning with Riley Boone. Boone takes low. Threatening to drop a bump there, Riley Boone, but Houston third baseman Janiah Thomas creeping in. Ellie Matthews staying back on the play. Interesting to have to get the Good eye once again, no swing on appeal, it's 2-0. Boone, the Oklahoma native, a good day earlier today against McNeese, two for two, two run score, three RBI in her first home run of the season. Coming off the game with a ton of momentum here with Boone, hoping to keep it, but Maybe looking for the next pitch there. Ahead in the count is about a two and one is where, right where you want to be. You've seen something you like, and you've seen something that okay, where you can maybe judge some timing and, and, and read the feet, read the defense a little bit. She's right where she should want to be here as a hitter. The two one count. Feels like Wilkie's trying to work down in the zone early in the count, and then when she gets the two strikes, then elevate. That's what it looks like um, with the. Oklahoma lineup last inning. You saw a few batters chasing on that rise ball, but you're right later in the count. Um, here, in a little different situation with the left-handed batter threatening the bunt and the slap. Uh, looks like she's trying to keep the ball away, not let him get their hands on it. Called strike. The count is full. Robert Gonzalez, the home plate umpire. Valdemar Guerra is at first here at Arrington in third base on. This is something the Oklahoma lineup wanted uh, yesterday, that patience and forcing the Houston pitching staff to throw, making them work. Hopped into shallow left, Bethany Bush. Makes the catch, good at bat from Riley Boone, but Wilkie wins the battle. Wilkie wins the battle, but you know, had to throw a lot of pitches to get there. You know, you want to make the most efficient use of your time, and you know, she's still settling in. It was a little rocky first inning, but as she gets more comfortable on the mound against this team and against their offensive approach, um, you know, I'm sure she'll, she'll zone in a little bit and, and get closer to the plate and, and trust her defense a little bit more to perform for her. Tiara Jennings in the top of the order. She walked in the first inning and came around to score. That's right. Tiara Jennings used to putting the bat on the ball there. You can see with the two, 2021 NFC National Freshman of the Year, 27 home runs, so shy of that freshman record, but you know she's used to putting the bat on the ball. Nonetheless, she'll take the walk again on base. 2 0. Wilkie has not thrown her a strike through one and a half at bats. Taking her time, resetting on the mound. That's maturity there. That's, that's growth there to sit. Take a moment. You own the mound. Reset a little bit. Let go of the frustration. She's still learning the umpire's zone. You know, it can change from game to game. Um, the tightness of that zone and you know, what they're willing to let go and allow. So taking her time, resetting. Let's start fresh here and, and hopefully make some improvements. Four straight out of the zone. Jennings has seen eight pitches today, not offered at any of the eight, and she's drawn two walks. That's a great job by Jennings. Knowing the situation, watching the previous at-bats, she knew, just like you knew, that she hadn't thrown a strike to the batters prior to her, so I'm sure she was in a take to get a strike mentality from Coach Gasso over there, and, and works out just fine for her on base again. But it's the walks, it's the hit by pitches that continue to be Oklahoma's pivot point um, and capitalization points. First pitch is a ball. Coleman at the plate. She struck out her first time up, chasing a rise ball from Kenna Wilkie. Got into this yesterday. Many other years, she would have been the freshman of the year, but her teammate, statistically slightly better than Tiara Jennings, still an All-American freshman season for the native of the Colony, Texas. One ball, one strike. 
Okay. Five forty-five on base percentage last year for Jada Coleman. Nine homers, eleven doubles, fifty-three driven in, and a team high twenty steals. What a career for her so far. Yeah, she absolutely had a run at that, but some healthy competition on the same team in the same roster. You know, the reward stayed in the family. The award, rather, stayed in the family, but, man, she had such a campaign um, the season, you know, her freshman season here, and it just bleeds over, bleeds over, and that's Coach Gasso's job is to make sure that these players continue to elevate and continue to grow, and here she is now batting second in the lineup this season. That's up and away, gets away from Katie Bay Brown. And down to second, Tiara Jennings. Taking the steal there, some movement. The aggressiveness on the bases from Oklahoma. Not necessarily a pass ball, but just one that got away from Katie Ray Brown behind the plate. And just a split second is all you need to make that decision and take a run for second base. So another opportunity capitalized. Ball four, five pitch walk to Coleman. They're trying to be extra careful. They're trying to pitch to a certain part of the plate. And Oklahoma is just not offering at it. Well, that's how a game plan can change on you. That's called an in-game adjustment. I'm sure the Oklahoma lineup, you know, patience has been a part of it, but it seems they've just gone to the method of take to get a strike. They're forcing Wilkie to prove that she's going to be able to get one in the zone and, and get one in the zone consistently. So um, watching, oh, we have a change here, making a change there with Wilkie. So send her back to the bullpen, maybe work on some things, but give somebody else an opportunity to, uh, to challenge the Oklahoma lineup a little further. Megan Lee out of the bullpen is her first time into a game this weekend. Coach Vesley loves her competitive nature. She says she's the one I'm taking into an alley. <laughs> That's right, that toughness. It's toughness, toughness, toughness that Coach Vesley is just breathing into this lineup, into this roster. Uh, Megan, Megan Lee here, you know, she's got that toughness about her. She's fierce on the mound. Um, she was proving herself last weekend. Someone that blossomed, uh, truly, from off season into the regular season now. Uh, and, and, you know, it's been a joy to watch, you know, as she gets into this comfort here in Houston. Numbers this season. This will be her fourth appearance, 1.83 ERA. Struggled a little bit on day one against UTSA, but bounced back later in the weekend. Four hits allowed in seven and two-thirds innings. Walks have been an issue, seven walks, but nine strikeouts for Megan Lee. That's right. Something Coach Nestle shared with us earlier this week is Megan Lee's ability to just flip the light switch, right? So being able to come into some adverse situations that, you know, maybe she would like to, you know, have a better slate to walk into, but being able to flip the switch nonetheless, you know, even when she struggles on her own, being able to come back, recompose, and deliver a performance. Here's Allo, hit by a pitch in the first. Two home runs earlier today, now 92 career home runs, second all-time in college softball history. First pitch popped up, foul behind first. Last year, the National Player of the Year, 34 homers, hit 475, 89 driven in. Second time in her career, she led the country in homers. She had 30 as a freshman in 2018. Just power, so much power out of, out of Jocelyn Allo here. She brings to the plate composure. She brings to her teammates confidence. Each time, probably without knowing it, she just exudes the energy to uh, to elevate her performance, that, that God-given talent that she already has. Hit well to <laughs> left, that is gone. A line drive homer for Jocelyn Allo. Now two away from Lauren Chamberlain. 93 in her career. Absolutely incredible. Right there, saw, knew what she was going up there looking for. She had a game plan at the plate, okay? I'll tell you that right now. She 
she knew what pitch she was hoping to see, and as soon as she locked eyes with it, she says, oh yeah, foot down, boom. Line drive almost out of left field there. Not much air, just straight out. And the trot around the bases, again, great at bat, powerful player. Look at her, just another day at the office. She's at 93 career home runs and 214 games, including today. Warren Chamberlain hit 95 home runs in 220 games. John stands and takes a ball. It's always great when your name can be mentioned in the same sentence with Lauren Chamberlain, okay? So, you know, another Oklahoma great um, of the many, right? But, you know, Jocelyn Allen nonetheless will be one of them and already is. John's a two-run homer in the first inning yesterday. Smokes it to center, straightaway shot over the batter's eye. Back to back for Oklahoma. First Allo, and now Jenna Johns. Jenna Johns doing what she does. She had a great performance in their game yesterday against Houston. Enjoying the moment, living in the moment. Just gets a hold of that one, makes a mistake. Megan Lee just makes an unfortunate mistake right over the middle of the plate. And Jenna Johns had no problems about that. Look, supposed to be outside, maybe misses right down the middle. And Jenna Johns, that's a little fun go. Takes a four right there. Good for her. Johns gave a scouting report to Kinsey Hansen before going back to the dugout. <laughs> there it is. That's what you do. That's a part of the game. She, was, she wasn't up there long. Didn't see many pitches at all. But hey, what did you see? What did you, you know, what do you think about it? What's going on? And uh, it's those little pieces of conversation, those little nuggets right there, two or three seconds before the at bat that, that help your teammate out and prepare them a little bit further, especially with a new pitcher coming into the game that no one's seen this weekend. Here's Hansen in the first inning. Low pitch from Kenna Wilkie. There she is, digging one out. So you'll see if the approach is different this time uh, with Hansen at the plate. So taking some opportunities to, to really drive the ball and you know seeing what she likes. She commands the plate when she comes up there, whether with the gear on or with the bat in her hand. You know, she, she also claims her territory. And she's done that already today, nonetheless. Two balls, one strike. Walks have crushed Houston against Oklahoma this weekend. Jennings has walked twice, scored twice. Allo hit by a pitch and then hit the three-run homer. Of the seven runs, four have been scored by players who walked or were hit by a pitch. And Oklahoma, of course, drew eight walks against Houston yesterday. High fly ball, deep and foul. Home run distance, just a few feet away from back to back to back homers. <laughs> exactly. You see Hansen coming back uh, from first base, hoping that one hooked to the right instead of the left there. Not much wind today, but you know, maybe she just got around it a little too much, but certainly the power was there. But to your point, it is the, the mistakes, the walks, the hit by pitches that makes games become out of reach, right? It could be a 3-0 ball game, 4-0 ball game. Um, but with these small mistakes and misses, things can begin to get away from you. Kenzie Hansen, All-American last year. Named the USA Softball National Team for the upcoming international tournaments this summer, including the 2022 Japan All-Star Series. She'll be there alongside Jocelyn Allo, Jada Coleman, Tiara Jennings. How cool of an opportunity. Off speed there in the dirt. Hanson draws a walk. And again, patience prevails for the Oklahoma Sooners. On base again. Uh, just being patient, you would think that Hansen goes to the plate hungry watching two back-to-back -back home runs for her team. She had one at her last at bat, but nope, that's the that's the growth in Hansen as a as an upperclassman now. And line drive base hit from Taylor Snow on the first offering from Megan Lee. Able to take her time and, and find a way on base and just to be followed up just like that, another base hit. 
So you see as, as Coach Gasso talks about building her lineup, right, how important that five, six, seven, six, seven, eight, seven, eight, nine, how, how important those players are to the lineup. Um, those are the players you want to get on base. Those are your momentum. That's your momentum. Your, the top of your lineup is, is the fire starter there, but your momentum is carried on by the bottom half of that lineup. And boy, are they performing already. Grace Lyon stands in. Five straight have reached. Six in a row, actually. Boone is retired to begin the inning. And then Jennings walked, Coleman walked, and then Jocelyn Allo, a three-run homer. Line drive into center, a base hit. Hanson had to make sure it got through before she went to third. That slowed her down a bit. Bases are loaded with one out. Good. And good for Hanson. A little awkwardness rounding uh, or leading off of second base, heading over to third, making sure she doesn't interfere with that ball. If she does or with the play at all, you know, the play could be dead and we could have some interference calls there. But good job for her to know the situation, know the game stay out of the way and, and still make sure she reaches safely at third base. Seven runs, seven hits now for Oklahoma. Megan Lee talking things over with the pitching coach Lacey Waldrop. Surely just asking her team to regroup there. Not, you know, not be too intimidated by the score here. Nonetheless, we need two outs. Okay, this is where we're at. We've let a few runs across the plate. Uh, the Houston lineup, has, uh, the Houston defense has let a few runs across the plate. Um, but just to regroup, recollect, and I'm sure she's telling her team to just get the last two outs and let's let the offense have an opportunity to, to get the game back in reach there. Melissa Brito now. She flied out to deep left to end the first inning. Base is loaded for Oklahoma. Hanson at third, Snow at second, Grace Lyons over at first. One and oh. Brito with the opportunity today to work her way into the lineup more consistently. Doesn't appear to start uh, many of the games leading into this season or through the first few weekends, but has had her opportunities and capitalizes when she gets in. Earned herself a start today. Good pitch at the knees for a strike. And that's what Coach Gasser was targeting when she brought Alyssa Brito over from Oregon. A versatile player could play multiple positions, has already played four this season. That's right. Somebody that's a versatile team player can get in there and, and get in where you fit in, if you will. And, whether it's the outfield, whether it's the infield, first base, or DP position, um, just to be able to get in and do your job, understanding the assignment and uh, doing so as a professional, as she is now. Megan Lee asking Katie Ray Brown to cycle through the sides. That's a call strike. Good conversation with Coach Vassar this week about Megan Lee saying she's going to throw to her spots. She had seven walks last weekend. He doesn't care if it's called the ball. Obviously wants a strike, but she's not going to give in. Absolutely. So Coach Vesley speaks of Megan Lee, and she says that even if the umpire you know, necessarily isn't calling it, Megan Lee understands. Rito to left in the ballpark for Bush. Kinsey Hansen tags from third and scores. Snow held at second. It's 8-0 Oklahoma. Megan Lee understands a, a, a good pitch from a strike and where she may be able to etch one out here, etch one out there. She's not intimidated by missing the plate just barely. Here we'll take a look at the RBI uh, fly out from Brito. A little bit on the heels there in left field, but the run was tagged up. She knew exactly what she was going to do there to score for her team, 8-0. to zero. Riley Boone, first pitch. Fouled into the glove of Kitty Ray Brown. Batting for the second time this inning. Fly out to left against Kenna Wilkie. Looks 
looks like the same approach from uh, her last at bat, keeping the ball away from the lefties, not taking the chance coming in or in and high, keep you know making them reach the hands out and and, and maybe tap one over to Janiah Thomas or into left field with Daphne Bush. But. Into center, Aspen Howie underneath it, and the side is retired. But Oklahoma scores five runs including the 93rd career home run from Jocelyn Allo, now two away from Lauren Chamberlain. To the last of the second, all Sooners in Houston. Sellout crowd at Cougar Softball Stadium. Oklahoma leads Houston 8 0. Matt Peterson with Jalen Baldridge, the former Houston infielder. And Jordy Ball back to the circle with an eight run cushion after she struck out the side in the bottom of the first. Playing nice and loose here. Aspen Howie digs in, takes ball one. Offense is taking the time to give you a nice cushion that always makes you more comfortable in the mound here for ball. Nice and relaxed. Towards second. Side on throw from Jennings. And Aspen Howard retired on two pitches. Ball left the box there with a little awkward spin. Maybe a little bit of an inside pitch, kind of jammed How he pushes it inside out and it just fizzles over to, to second base. Routine play. Becca Schulte back for Houston. Was not available yesterday. Five for 14 on the season. Had two home runs in her first two at-bats of the season after missing last season. Great story, Becca Schulte, as she swings and misses. She's a seventh year senior. Played at LSU. Transferred to Houston. She thought her college softball career was over in 2020 when the pandemic ended the season. Now she is two years later, batting fifth and playing second base for the Cougars. What an electric player that she's turned out to be for this Houston roster here. Um, Becca Schulte opening up the season after such a long time off uh, with home runs in the, in the last outing last weekend. So Coach Vesta speaks highly of, of Becca Schulte and, and what she brings to this team and, and the maturity she, that comes along with it. Now Fletcher Light, the sports information director who covers softball for Houston, had a great note. She ended the 2020 season with the home run before the pandemic ended the year. Then she came back in 22 with homers in her first two at bat. So she had homers in back-to-back -back games spanning 23 months. It's got to be a feeling there, you know, the excitement in your senior, or what you think is your senior season back in 2020, and to come back with a whole different level of excitement in, in this year, 2022, uh, to feel the home run 
coming off the bat. That's got to be a joy for her. Here's the 2-2 from Jordy Ball. Fastball. Four strikeouts for Ball. Just not able to catch up with that one. A little late on the swing there for Becca Schulte. So, yeah, just kind of fans at it. Maybe not the pitch she wanted, but just a little behind. You want to hit the ball a little, a little further out in front. Uh, she knew it. And she'll go back and learn from that one. Now it's Rock Benavides, the shortstop. Three hits and 13 at bats on the season. Rock Benavides putting the bat on the ball. A change here that, you know, just just touch it, right? <laughs> Let's take it back to the basics. You're down 8-0 to zero at home, uh, just in the bottom of the second. Putting the bat on the ball, regain some confidence here, and, and see if you can poke one through the infield and, and, and add some fire, add some life back to the dugout here for the Houston Cougars. It's up and in. It's interesting with Coach Gasso now in her 27th season, Hall of Famer, five national titles. With Jordy Ball, star freshman, the running national player of the year. And she hasn't really pumped the brakes publicly about her. Oftentimes you'll see a veteran coach with the young star player saying, hey, let's give them time to acclimate and gain some attention. But she put her into the fire against UCLA last week and she passed that test. 14 strikeouts, most by an Oklahoma freshman since Kehlani Ricketts had 16 against Texas A&M back in 2010. But with the confidence she has, she wants these moments. Ain't broke, don't fix it. She came out with a bang. She's rolling, she's got some momentum. Let her hold on to it. Benavides to second, Tiara Jennings over to Taylor and Snow. And the side is retired. Six up, six down with four strikeouts for Jordy Ball. We go to the third. It's 8 0 Oklahoma. Top of the third inning, Oklahoma leading Houston eight to nothing. And Oklahoma far and away the team of the decade, trying to make it team of the decade for two straight decades. Let's go back to 2013. Oklahoma, four national titles since that span. Florida won two, Florida State in 18. UCLA beat Oklahoma in the champion series in 19. Building a program with some legacy. It's, it's what uh, the godfather, Coach, Gass <laughs> Coach Gasso does. Um, a program with some DNA, some, some championship DNA being built in that these younger players coming out of high school and travel ball just want to be a part of. It's hard not to root for this Oklahoma program. Tiara Jennings, she has walked twice, has not seen a strike. First pitch swinging here in the third, pops it up. Ellie Matthews having trouble with the sun, and Schulte comes over to make the catch. A little hungry there from Jennings. If you walk, something that she might not be too used to. She enjoys getting the bat on the ball and saw something she liked. It had a little off speed, a little change in the speed on it, but uh, Jennings couldn't get the timing down, and, and Houston defense gets a quick, much needed out. Now it's Jada Coleman. She takes ball one. It was the sixth champ series in 10 years for 
Coach Gasso and the Sooners. And they were the fourth team in Women's College World Series history to win the Champ Series after losing game one. And G. Juarez starting games two and three to beat Florida State. And they really faced elimination five times, four in the early rounds and then once against Florida State. And we went back and watched some of the highlights of what James Madison did in the shock first day of the College World Series beating Oklahoma. Of course, Odyssey Alexander can't forget the name. Um, you know, giving a face to many young girls out there and, and an amazing performance and putting Oklahoma on notice for sure. But nonetheless, the, the team came back and, and did what they were expected to do and, and took it all the way to the championship against all odds. What's going on here? Lacey Waldrop out to talk. The home plate umpire, Robert Gonzalez. Looked like an illegal pitch called by the third base umpire, so we have an automatic ball here, and it negated um, whatever pitch crossed the plate last. That's Jared Arrington over at third. Be interested to see what it was, see if uh, we catch Megan Lee focusing on something else a little closer this time. That hits the outside. So they survive four elimination games. They fall behind. Florida State, of course, lost its first game at the College World Series last year. It was two teams that survived four elimination games just to get to the Champ Series. That's the beauty of the, of the tournament, the tournament style play and the opportunities that you have to, you know, maybe not perform your best as soon as you come out there and be able to throw a, throw a tough track now. You got significantly more games and more competition you got to go through, but you can get there. And that's the beautiful part of, of, the, of the World Series, of the Women's College World Series and the men's. Line drive to left, Bush spun around, Bush tracks it down. Deep fly from Jada Coleman, but nice defense. Coleman with the catch on the track. Good swing by Coleman, great read by Bethany Bush in left field. Starting, you know, swing the hips to the left, swing the hips to the right. Able to track the ball all the way to the fence with the warning bat, with the warning track. Here's Jocelyn Allo last time up after back-to-back -back walks. No doubt about it, line drive home run to left. 93 career home runs, two earlier today against McNeese. One more today, she's two behind former Sooner Lauren Chamberlain for the all-time Division I softball home run record. It's so interesting because just as we talk about it and, and everybody in the softball world talks about it, you know she's thinking about it, the, the record that she's chasing and, and the pressures that come along with that. Talking to Coach Gasso, she just reminds her to just play free. It'll come. You have so many games to, to reach that record here at the beginning of the season. Just it'll come. Allow it to happen organically. So maybe she was extra motivated today. Two against McNeese, two against Houston. She has 94 in her career. Uh, Jana Johns, also homered. Jana Johns doing a great job following Jocelyn Allo's performances so far, but Jana Johns, a, a, a player of her own for sure. Laying off of the high pitch there, able to see it. Read it from the hand, say, now. Not this time. We told the story yesterday. Coach Gasso said Jocelyn Allo came in as a freshman, took the softball world by storm. 30 homers led the country in 2018. Hit foul at third. And then her sophomore year, things started to change for Allo. Softball mentality wise, it was not fun for her. And when it's not fun for her, it's not fun for the rest of us. Two week sabbatical for Jocelyn Allo. Given by Coach Gasso, she made it clear it was on a suspension, just a, a break from softball to get away from the game. Don't watch it, don't read about it. Up the middle from Johns on one, two. She has the ninth hit today for Oklahoma. Good job hitting the ground ball up the middle. That's all it takes, put the ball in play, hit it where they're not. She sees one, looks a little out on the plate uh, of the sound of the bat and trots on over to first base. Another day at the office putting someone on base for uh, Kinsey Hansen to come and, and advance some runners here with two outs.
They were scoreless with two outs in the first. Kenna Wilkie had just struck out Janet Johns on a rise ball. And then Hanson took a low pitch, took it out to left for a three-run shot. Got things going for Oklahoma. Can't say enough good things about Kenzie Hansen and the, the aura that walks around with her. She does a great job of, of leading her team and, you know, lead, lead by example, right? She sets a good example on what to follow, how to present yourself, and, and nonetheless, how to perform. Let's not forget that. Put the bat on the ball, be a team player, and then to play the catcher position and, and be the leader, have all eyes on the field and, and reign in her team and, and, and just perform. You see in this Houston defense, a little bit of life lost here. The game can get away quickly um, through the first few innings here, especially with this electric Oklahoma lineup. Lots of excitement coming off the bats of the Oklahoma team, but the Houston defense needs to you know, stay involved here in this game. You can see in the first inning or two, lots of jumping around, lots of talking to each other and pep work. And, no verbal cues. Not so much of that going on now. Well, it's the perfect team on offense in terms of patience and power today. Four walks, four homers. They'll make you come into their zone, and then they'll, you have to do it with runners on base, and you have these long home runs as Hanson draws the fifth walk today for Oklahoma. Tough pitch, good eye by Hanson. Tough pitch, you see the frustration from Megan Lee on the mound. Um, Katie Ray Brown doing a good job behind the plate framing those pitches, but the umpire staying true to his zone and, and, and making it clear what he'll call and what he won't. There's last year's Oklahoma team. Set eight NCAA records, including batting average, slugging, on-base percentage, and homers. Got a substitute hitter here, pinch hitter going in for snow. Lindsey Elam, Oklahoma native, will pinch hit for Taylor Snow with two outs and two aboard in the third. Senior backup catcher getting the opportunity to, to bring some runners around here with two outs. We saw Gasso there. She has challenged this team. We could be the best team of all time in softball history. And you don't hear things like that from coaches in most sports. But I think Coach Gasso says this is a special group. They won the national championship. I need to find a way to give them extra motivation here in 2022. Of course, you have some, some rarities here with this roster. You have just so much experience. And not only experience, but championship experience. They know how to handle themselves in these tough situations. Great. Line drive off the bat of Elam. Nice play from Rock Benavides in shallow left. But Oklahoma. That's another. Jocelyn Allo took it off the dirt to the opposite fields for her second home run today. It's Janet Johns earlier this afternoon. Jocelyn Allo here in the third. Not a bad pitch at all. Now 94 career home runs, one shy of Lauren Chamberlain as we go to the last of the third. Nine-nothing Oklahoma going to the bottom of the third at the Houston Classic. 
Matt Peterson with Jalen Baldridge, the former Houston infielder. How fun is it for you, a former player, to see a sellout crowd like we have today? <laughs> it's it's awesome to see um, the support, you know, that that's in Houston. A lot of native uh, Houston natives in the stands today. You know, you have some Oklahoma fans. They travel well. Oklahoma fans absolutely travel well. Um, but just to see the support, you see a lot of the youth teams in the stands, and you know, it's it's always great to have the younger generation come and see competitive play like this. Uh, and the autograph lines after the game. The ladies always like that. Memorable moments from Gibson last night, her first college home run. Big, big moment for Gibson last night. Fulfilling her dreams for sure and not taking, not wasting any time with this at bat today. Swing at the first pitch there. Kylie Gibson from Houston, just nine at bats. An awesome reaction we saw from Janiah Thomas, another freshman from Houston, greeting her at the top step of the dugout as she got back, following her first home run. Straight back foul means one thing. She's got a good eye on it, has the opportunity to send it straight up the middle of the field. That's what that means there. But yeah, I mean, you come into your your college, your college of choice when you when you sign on and you meet your freshman teammates and they become your family. You spend a lot of time um, with these group of kids and the bond created there is 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 one that lasts for sure. Just high, one ball, two strikes. Jordy Ball has been outstanding for strikeouts. There are two innings. Hope Trout line through a no hitter earlier today for. Oklahoma, and a win against McNeese. Oklahoma still not allowed an earned run this season. Foul off the catcher. Hanson a little slow to get back there. Tough as an ox taking her time walking out. Even though she's in pain, gonna go comfort her team. Even though she was the one getting hurt, walked straight up to the circle, cracking some jokes. I'm sure she'll do just fine. Chat with Jordy Ball and she'll walk back towards the catcher's area. Let's see what happened here. We got a swipe. Oh, right onto the knee there. Part of the, uh, the weaker part of the catcher's gear. The top of the knee right there on her. Shake it off and she's right back in the game. Hoping we don't get a ball in the dirt here and challenge it. And there's a base hit for Kylie Gibson. First hit for Houston today off Jordy Ball and she did it on a one-two pitch. Kylie Gibson going for a pitch that she saw right from the hand. Take it in that 5-6 hole where they're not. Put the ball on the ground. Not the most powerful swing in the world, but when you get the ball in play and you get it on the ground, you give yourself an opportunity. Um, beyond that, you give your teammates an opportunity to score a run. Now it's Kitty Ray Brown. Good fastball and a swing and a miss. Coach Vesley over there at third base reminding Katie Wade Brown to hit the ball on the ground. Not let the game get too far away from her. Katie Ray has a tendency to seek the long ball. She sure has the power to do it and the consistency to do it as well, but ooh, shot over there at first to uh, remind Katie Ray to, you know, Stay in the box, stay disciplined, and make contact, and, and your talents will shine naturally. They'll shine organically. Just give yourself the opportunity to play small. Bounce foul by Katie Ray Brown. Good pitch by Jordy Ball. Maybe taking a little off of that one, maybe a little off speed there. Um, hitting the outside low part of the plate there, and 
provoking the swing out of Katie Marie Brown. One ball, two strikes. Smoke to third, a throw back to first, and the ball dropped. Another outstanding play at the hot corner from Jenna Johns. Jenna Johns, what a play she has there. Oh, maybe a little injury from Gibson at first base. Diving back to the back, but good hard hit by Katie Ray. Jenna Johns elevating, climbing the ladder all the way up, pump fake. Unsure if she was going to go for it, but Gibson was too far off the bag, couldn't resist. Takes a shot over to first base. Looked like the, the throw was in time. Ball pops out of the first baseman's glove. Gibson sink. Good contact from Kitty Ray Brown, but excellent defense from Jenna Johns. This is from yesterday. This was hit to third, came out of her glove, Johns from her stomach with no hesitation, and they get a fast base runner by a few steps. Insane play. She is shining on defense here and on offense, but now we'll go with the defensive side, just so nonchalantly. Look at her, ready for the next play, just happy to be here and enjoying uh, playing the game she loves. But to be able to make that diving play yesterday, I said it yesterday, um, on, during that game, but make that diving play. The ball bounces out of the glove and from the stomach, make a good throw right to the chest of your first baseman. Heck of a play. Paige Holsey now from the left side. Side for a ball. Holsey's first at bat today against Jordy Ball. You see the mindset from Kinsey Hansen behind the plate, that outside pitch, she pops right up, expecting Gibson to make a break for it at, at second base, maybe stay down there a little longer, give the umpire a good shot to see. Boom. Janet Johns, the third baseman for Oklahoma, first three years at South Carolina, she transferred to Oklahoma for the 2021 season. Over 200 career games between the two schools. She's become an anchor at third for Coach Gasso and the Sooners. An anchor to say the least here, at least this weekend. Come towards the circle, Ball has it, flat-footed throw over to first. Good defense from Jordy Ball. Good job by Paige Holsey, put the ball on the ground and advance the runner. Jordy Ball being able to pitch, understand where the ball is going to go and, and, and have that quick reaction time to field the ball and get it right over to first base. Sacrificing the runner at second, but she I think she had two teammates there covering third base, so there was no further advancement on the table. Gibson in scoring position for Bethany Bush. She faces ball for the second time today. Struck out swinging her first time. Taking a strong lead off at second base, forcing the Oklahoma defense to take a second look at her. Keep her honest at second base there. <laughs> Bethany Bush doing a good job so far of you know, staying in the box, being aggressive, allowing herself to see some pitches. Uh, it's ingrained in the leadoff position to see a few pitches. Make sure you get on base if you can, but allow the people behind you to see what's going on. Bush into shallow left. Melissa Brito towards the line to make the catch. Gibson is stranded. Gibson the first hit for Houston. Jordy Ball, three scoreless innings. On to the fourth. 9 nothing Sooners.
downtown Houston on this Saturday afternoon. Excellent weather for the Houston Classic. Oklahoma leading nine to nothing. New pitcher for Houston, it's Matty Boy. Matty Boyd will make her Houston debut against a former Big 12 rival. Last season in Oklahoma, only five appearances, but very good numbers. From Saxe, Texas. Did not pitch last weekend. And she faces the Sooners here in the fourth, starting with Grace Lyons. Boyd getting the call here, down nine to zero. Getting her feet wet for the first time in a Houston uniform. Gain her composure. A nice, simple windup. Probably just out there to have some fun today. Katie Ray Brown, show her the ropes a little bit. At least on this side of the, on this side of the ball. See what she can put together. To the backstop, three balls, no strikes. Maddie Boyd, transfer from Oklahoma State, Coach Festley before the opening weekend said we've seen tremendous growth from her. Potentially relief pitcher that weekend. They didn't find a spot for her. She works hard in and away with off speed. For the inside, it's three and one. Tricking Lions there with an inside pitch going for a strike. Lions believing it was ball four, but that's good. Go ahead and get a strike in there under your belt. Get a feel for the strike zone for yourself rather than the books from the dugout. Ooh, close pitch there. But Lions draws a walk, two singles and a walk for Grace Lions. Lions getting on base, doing what she does, being a force for the Oklahoma roster, both on defense. We know her there nice and well, but especially on offense here in the bottom half of the lineup, batting seven today. But on base, and this is where Oklahoma finds their capitalization. They're going to find a way to RBA her around the base. And ooh, it's another mistake there from the pitching staff out of Houston. Alyssa Brito. Off the lower back, down to first. And there's the advancement. Brito seemingly unfazed from the hit by pitch. Coach Gasso coming to make another substitution, possibly at the plate here. Yep, right on the backside. Hoping to see something there, but she's had a day so far. Now it's Grace Green. Green pinch hit yesterday. Versatile player can play in multiple positions. Pitch is low. 40 games last year on the national championship team, hit 373 with four homers. Her best season 2019 when they lost in the champ series to UCLA. She had 17 homers at 359. Coach Gasso teaching her Oklahoma lineup. Grace Green coming into the game here to be patient. We got a new pitcher on the mound. Let's see what she's got. Allow the rest of the team to download some data, download some info, and and use it as they will. Unsure on that one. Looks like a called strike, not a swinging strike. But it's not abnormal to be a little unsure coming off the bench, um, but got an opportunity here with nobody out and runners on base to make an impact, to take advantage. Green was the Big 12 Freshman of the Year in 2019 and a third team All-American. Well, 100th 
30 games in her Oklahoma career. She's a career 356 hitter. Shows how hard it is to be a consistent starter now for Oklahoma. 356 in her career. On base percentage of 443, but utility, bat off the bench, play a few positions. You got a great shot here with that Oklahoma jersey on, but even with, with numbers like that, she's a great player, well-rounded, such a useful tool to this team. Great ball. Line to third, out of the glove of Thomas on the foul side. Great ball there. Got the meat of the bat on it, but to your point, some good numbers coming out of her throughout her years as a collegiate uh, athlete. And, just speaks to how much talent and how much athleticism is, is just breathing through the Oklahoma dugout um, and what it takes to be consistently in that lineup. Great player getting an opportunity to show it again. Green draws a walk, 3-2 pitch from Boyd in the dirt. Booing, that's for Mackenzie Donahue, who's of affection from the Oklahoma fans in attendance today. That's right, a play on the on the name, Donahue, that's what they're going for, but showing that patience there at the plate. We've got some runners on base, and I'm looking here, I think they're all unearned runners on the bases at the moment. So again, this is where Oklahoma has an opportunity to capitalize and and bust this game wide open with no outs. Houston defense has got to be on their toes. Top foul by Donahue. Donahue hit 40, 476 in the World Series last year. Best for Oklahoma. Also a World Series best. 10 RBI, three homer, and a double. Some spectacular diving catches out in left field as well. Heck of an athlete. Every time she touches the field and gets her opportunity, she seizes the seizes the moment. That gets by Katie Ray Brown. Grace Lyons will hold it third. Two balls, one strike. Doesn't look like Boyd made it all the way to the plate there. Interesting to see Oklahoma not take the chance to uh, to play another run there. Got such a lead, and you know maybe see what you can get away with and, and what you can't, but. Just a little bit of conservancy from, um, from Coach Gasso. It's a short. Benavides over to first for the out. Lions scores from third. An RBI grounds out for Mackenzie Donahue. Rock Benavides going for the going for the safe play at, at first base there, opting not to go home. Get an out, get some momentum back for the Houston Cougars on defense making sure she's staying on her toes, nice and hot, ready for anything at the short step. Donahue, pinch hit for Tiara Jennings. Now Jada Coleman, the number two hitter, stands in. Two in scoring position. Now you're in an interesting situation. You got the meat of your lineup. You just had some substituted hitters, some pinch hitters come in for eight, nine, and one, and now they've done their job. They did their due diligence and got on base, gave the, the meat of that lineup the opportunity to plate some more some more runs here. Great pitch. You see the patience coming there. Looking again like the take till you get a strike mindset here. And, and maybe we'll see Jada Cole ready to pull the trigger. Two and one. left-hand side of the plate, such a powerful hitter, a versatile player. Over the outside for a strike. Great career for Jada Coleman at the Colony High School, the Colony Texas, both the state run. Record for most runs all time in Texas. Ended with 209 career steals in high school. Speed kills, she's got it. When she gets on base, you know that there's an opportunity she's gonna run on you, you know, so. 
it's interesting to see how defenses around the country aggressively play her. Try to keep her off the bag. Coleman draws a walk. Second walk drawn today by Jada Coleman. And the crowd will tell you who's coming to the plate for Oklahoma. Oh man, do we have a stage set right now. We have a big moment coming up for the slugger of the team here. One home run away from tying that, that record that's just hanging over her. And, and I'm sure she's excited now and stay calm and collected and see if she can pull one off here in Houston. First pitch is up. Dawson Manalo hit by a pitch in the first, a three-run homer in the second, a solo shot last time. Two home runs earlier today against McNee, so that graphic is up to the minute after a four-home run day. Ooh, that was a strong swing. You can feel it in the, in the, it's in the air here in Houston. Strong swing, kind of waving in an outside pitch there, taking a moment outside of the box to uh, recompose and let you know stay within the moment, be very present. Warren Chamberlain, 95. Follow to right. Overcomes oh. Paige Holsey. It falls in. It's a fair ball. Be a long single for Jocelyn Allo. Off the end of the bat, scoring Alyssa Brito. Good hit, put the bat on the ball. The crowd was hoping it was out, everybody was on their feet, but nonetheless, she did her job in that situation. She played it another run for her team. A little misread in, in right field by Paige Holsey out there. Ball falls just to the left of the line and kind of boots it over to the, the corner of the field there, but nonetheless, Jocelyn Allo did what she was supposed to do and, and her team is thankful for it. Lacey Waldrop out to talk with Maddie Boyd. Allo playing her 214th career game today. Lauren Chamberlain hit her 95th career homer in game number 220. So if they want bragging rights and <laughs> Allo wants to talk about when she hit hers, she still has six more games before hitting 220 in her sooner career. You know, it's easy to let the numbers and the metrics of it all become a part of it, but, you know, <laughs> she's still in that comp conversation. To be on that list in general is, is, is quite the accomplishment for her. Surely going for the number one in the top spot in the bare minimum, tying it. Um, but just, just such an incredible player and, and knowing how to live in the moment. Everybody's expecting, you know, bases loaded, huge ball over the fence, but... What does she do? She gets the job done for her team. She plays her part. She does her role. She gets on base. She plays another run. That's exactly what you want to see from any player in your lineup. She'll be remembered for the home runs, but she is an all-around hitter. Coach Gasso said she's the best hitter she's ever seen. Entering this season, a 426 career hitter at Oklahoma. 129 career walks, 60 career strikeouts, two to one ratio there. An on-base percentage at 531 in her Oklahoma career as Katie Bray Brown comes over, nearly gets there. The foul ball off the bat of Jana Johns. Followed up right here with Jana Johns. Consistent through the two games they've played here against the Houston Cougars and throughout the games they've played throughout the entire tournament. If Allo hits 30 this year, it'll be three seasons of 30 or more home runs in her career. She had 30 as a freshman in 18, 34 last year to win player of the year. Off to a great start here in 22. Oh gosh, that's incredible. Off the end of the bat, right to Becca Schulte. And for a flying effect, the bases remain loaded as Johns is retired. Bases loaded with two outs. Oklahoma has been completely unwavered in this situation, knowing how to do such an important task in, in plating runs with two outs. There was the, the story I told you yesterday about um, Pat Murphy, the head coach for Alabama softball, talking about 
one of the keys to success is being able to, to score runs with two outs. That's such a big momentum swing and a statistic when it comes to winning games consistently. They've already done it today. Uh, they've done it throughout probably every game this weekend if we were to take a look there, but another opportunity to show it here. No one can it. Oklahoma today, Jalen, five for eight with two outs. Six for 13 with runners on base. And they've drawn eight walks after drawing eight walks against Houston yesterday. We still got an at bat or two, an inning or two to go. Unless Houston can change some things on the offensive side and leg this game out. Hit hard right to Benavides. Good cut from Hanson on 2-0. A right to the Houston shortstop. Two more runs for Oklahoma. On to the last of the four. 11-0 Sooners. Nothing, Oklahoma at a sellout crowd at Cougar Softball Stadium. Jordy Ball back to the circle, her only hit. Allowed came last inning against Kylie Gibson on a two strike count. It's Janiya Thomas ready from the left side. Thomas fouls it off. Committed to Houston right after the eighth grade. Allo is moved from the DP slot to right field. And you remember during your career, Thomas's first visit, her unofficial visit. That's right. Uh, hard to forget Janiah Thomas's first visit to Houston. I was still here on the team, uh, along with some other Houston greats here, but Janiah Thomas, she came in and right off the bat, we knew that she was just a firecracker. She was gonna be a, a voice of reason around uh, when her time came. She she was a, had such a playful attitude. She was just ha joyful, happy to be around. And she was she was a dancer. She she was big into the, the social media dances and was not shy in showing them off. And so, uh, won't forget that. She uh, quite the personality to be around. And, it's, it's a full circle moment to have her here uh, at the Houston Cougar Stadium in the box and in this moment. One and two the count, ball ready. Tipped into the glove of Hanson. Thomas down on strikes, five strikeouts for Jordy Ball. Jordy Ball just playing so well today, so loose, composed. Still doing what she does in that circle you know, confiding in her defense and, and, and holding them accountable and making sure they know that she's right there at the plate with the time out. Coach Gasso here, but just, just a great job by Jordy, uh, Jordy Ball today. And, and, and 
and a good performance from her. Mixing in some versatile pitches, fooling batters, just tricking them up, down. You know, that north to south, east to west movement, some off speed there. And look at the smiles coming from her, knowing she's doing a great job. The mask is off, maybe a change here for her. A Jordy Ball will hand the ball. To Macy McAdoo. And Jordy Ball continues her wonderful freshman season. Oklahoma has still not allowed an earned run through eight and a half games. Just a mentality as a freshman to come in and, and have this level of an impact on your team. Oklahoma has found a good one in Jordy Ball and uh, the program will be happy to have her um, for the years to come. And you know, the fans are surely excited to see her here. Take us through this performance from Jordy Ball. Fooling batters, an off speed there, a rise ball early, going to the outside, just so many different tactics at the plate. Making batters miss, forcing them to make decisions and just making the wrong ones over and over again. And with all the confidence in the world and her teammates and her world class of a catcher, such a delight. And, uh, just a voice to be reckoned with. She'll be around for a long time in softball. The reigning pitcher of the week. Three in the third inning is one hit, no runs. Went three in the third against McNeese yesterday, managing the freshman's workload. Now Macy McAdoo out of Tuttle, Oklahoma, Tuttle High School. Career numbers for the right-hander. Here we go, she's got some starts here. Lots of innings pitch. She's a little bit of a workhorse here for the Oklahoma bullpen. Coming in to close out this game and hold the Houston lineup at bay and, 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 and get her team to the bus a little bit early. Pitched against McNeese yesterday, two thirds of an inning, one hit, one walk, one strikeout. See her nodding to her defense there, hoping to find the zone as she settles in on the mound, on the rubber there. 2-0 to start. You got a patient hitter at the plate. No fools in L.A. Matthews at the plate there, so. McAdoo last year, eight appearances, one start for the national champions. Three consecutive state championships at Tuttle High School. Two and two the count in LA Matthews. Fighting her way back into this lineup. Evening out the count here from the rubber. Last foul off the screen in front of the Houston dugout. Macy McAdoo travel ball with Oklahoma Athletics. Trying to continue the dominance in the circle for Oklahoma this season. McAdoo knew that she was hoping she could get Matthews to pull the trigger at the plate, but she was able to hold off there. She knew what she was doing. And McAdoo's ready for the next pitch. And Nice opportunity to send another batter down. Nice and calm on the mound. A long wind up there. A little bit of a missed pitch. Matthews draws a walk. Another small sign of, 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 of light and hope for this Houston lineup here in Houston, Texas. A runner on base. Haven't had many this game, or, or really at all against Oklahoma so far. To the backstop with Aspen Howie at the plate, L.A. Matthews up to second. Taking advantage of your opportunities is something Coach Vesley talked to us about earlier this week, is the aggressiveness on the base path. Pretty point blank opportunity to take second, but nonetheless it was taken. Spin Howie grounded out to second base her first time up. Coach 
especially reminding Aspen Howie to take it easy and stay low. Maybe take sure she gets a strike here. Who knows? New pitcher in the mound. They've done a lot of work against Sturdy Ball already. Nice tight pitch inside there. How we turn the inside there. McAdoo making her claim on the inside of the plate, keeping hitters honest. Four pitch walk. Matthews and Howie Walk. There's Jennifer Rocha. Hired as the associate head coach in 2018 after a great run at Florida. She's a Oklahoma alum. And she's really done a great job with his pitching staff. Two years ago in the fall, it was the hitters that made the pitchers dizzy. And then this fall, coming off a record-setting season and a record-setting offense, it was the hitters who were frustrated by this awesome Oklahoma pitching staff, which she leads. That's right. They have done a great job with with harnessing the talent that they have in the bullpen over at Oklahoma. Um, being able to build a staff that you can rely on all the way through from your A's to your relievers, from your game one to your game two, and that's gonna be such a huge asset when it comes to their time to make a run in and through the postseason is having multiple arms you can go, go to, and they're, set, they're setting that foundation now just week two of the season. So it'll be interesting to watch. Sophia Nugent is the new catcher for Oklahoma. She came on for Kinsey Hansen. That was scored a wild pitch. Second and third for Houston. Becca Schulte has a hitter's count. Two and one. Getting some new players in the ball game here for Oklahoma. Taking advantage of a comfortable lead and allowing some new players um, who maybe aren't going to be consistently in the lineup through the first few weekends here, uh, the opportunity to earn their way into the game and, and impact their team a little further. Jalen, we saw teams pitch Schulte inside last weekend and we talked with Coach Vesley about that. She said she had some good swings on them as that is just up and she draws a walk. And she had some good cuts, but those are glorified strikes, and she has to clean up the inner half. That's right, Schulte is an amazing hitter. Once she gets a hold of the ball, there's no telling what happens next. But, you know, even after a great weekend back as she had uh, against the teams they played, there's some things to work on. That's what weekend one is for. And, you know, being selective with good pitches, I know that's something that Coach Vesley stresses throughout the entire lineup is pitch selection and going for, for stuff you believe you can drive. Um, you know, maybe just trying to put that in uh, with, with Becca Schulte as she gets more comfortable back in the uniform for such a long time. Patty Gasso talking things over with Macy McAdoo. We're gonna see Nicole May back to the circle. So a tough outing for McAdoo, three walks issue. And May, who threw a, a one-hitter yesterday. Five innings, the shutout. We'll see Nicole May face Houston with the bases loaded when we come back. Nicole May into the game. Life in the Houston dugout, down by 11, but the base is loaded and one out. Three straight walks issued by 
We'll see McAdoo and now McCole May, who looked excellent yesterday with the one hitter. Fourth appearance today so far, 10 in the third innings. 17 strikeouts against only four walks. Zero ERA. My goodness, 0, 0.00 with 10 and one third innings pitched. That's a lot of ball. That's a lot of softball being played. And to perform that well through all that time is, it's good to see. Yesterday, five innings, one hit, no runs, two walks, six strikeouts. She needed only 69 pitches for the one hitter. I think that's what we discussed is. Benavides high and foul towards the Oklahoma bullpen. That's what we discussed is Nicole May's ability to play so efficiently. When she was throwing the ball, she was challenging her defense. She said, look, I'm going to throw it in the zone. I'm going to go for strikes here. I'm not going to waste any time. We're not going to dance around the plate. We're going for it. And, you know, with the defense that Patty Gasso's, Coach Gasso has put together, ooh, some unsure by Rock. Benavides unable to lay off. And she's down on strikes. Again, the Colme just trusting that defense attack in the zone. Here's this last pitch. Ooh, it just scales, just climbs right up the ladder. Boy, that was a good pitch. And Benavides just, just fooled by it. Concerned on the check swing, but if you're going to go, you better go is what they'll say. Kylie Gibson now takes a strike. Gibson, the only hit off Jordy Ball, a clean single between third and short. Only hit of the game, Jordy Ball, that's correct. So, we'll see what Gibson can put together here with two outs. Popped up foul behind first. The only hit against May yesterday for Houston was Janiah Thomas, an infield single in front of Grace Lyons, the shortstop. All right, that was Janiah Thomas using her pure speed, getting a good slap on the ball, getting a lot of air. Uh, on the slap of the dryer field yesterday and uh, just beating out the play. One and two. There's that same rise ball that just fooled Benavidez on that last strike three call there. But you know, just like that, and just one inning is all it takes to turn the tide here. Next thing, you know, Cougar struggling to get batters on base throughout the entire game. Nicole May, beautiful pitch to get Kylie Gibson. She does the job. Out of the bullpen, base has loaded one out. Two strikeouts to keep the shutout intact. And there you are. Good pitch. Just dips down a little low. Drop ball. Great job by Nicole May. Headed to the dugout. On to the fifth, 11-0 Oklahoma. Fifth inning now from the Houston Classic. Matt Peters in with Jalen Baldridge, the former Houston infielder. A lot of crimson in the crowd today, the Oklahoma faithful. Sellout crowd at the Cougar Softball Stadium. What a performance Oklahoma is giving this crowd here in Houston, Texas. Oklahoma fans traveling so well as they're notably known for giving Houston a run for their money at home. Doing a great job on both sides of the ball as they've done all, all season so far. Only in the second week in here, but look at all that Oklahoma red. Maddie Boyd in, she pitched in the fourth. And she comes back for the fifth against Lindsey Elam, who takes a strike. Elam popped up to shortstop as a pinch hitter. The captain for the veteran. The captain C over the chest, number 22. 
a leader on this team for sure. At the plate with an opportunity to add some numbers next to her name. Getting ahead here for, for Boyd in the circle for Houston. Something she struggled with in her first inning out. Making uh, you know, chase a little bit here on the second pitch and then coming out with the first pitch strike. That's, that's what you'd like to see from the Houston dugout. Off the end of the bat, foul. Maybe a fifth year senior catcher. 160 games now in her Oklahoma career. Great student, three-time academic All-Big 12 first team. Off the end of the bat towards right field. Great hustle from Holsey. She lays out but cannot get there. Great effort from the right fielder for the Houston Cougars, Paige Holsey. On that line, even with such a gap in this game, you remember to control the controllables. And uh, one of those is effort. And there she is on full display in right field there. Elam, a great regional last year. Six for nine, three homers, six RBIs, and a double. Jump starting Oklahoma's run of the national title. And your fifth year senior. She's got a ton of experience in this jersey, this Oklahoma textbook jersey here. Being around for a few of these championships that we displayed in the graphic earlier. And just having that experience on the roster, having these seniors who are just itching to come back and use that fifth year if they have it available and just give more and more of that experience and that knowledge and just the know-how to some of these younger players coming in like Jordy Ball and, and a few of the others. So it's good to see players who are just not yet ready to leave the game and, and, and come back and be able to perform at the, at the same level. One ball, two strikes on Elam in the dirt. She was the starter 2019. They went to the champ series, losing to UCLA. And she became one of two players in Oklahoma history to have a full season with a perfect fielding percentage with a minimum of 150 chances. Consistency, consistency. Line drive falls in front of Bush. She tried to backhand it. It goes to the wall. Elam into second base. What a great hit, a great piece of hitting right there. Putting the bat on the ball and just muscling it out there to left field. Good timing on it. Boom, hit it right in the sweet spot. Full finished swing. And looks like Bush out in left field tries to backhand it out there, going towards the foul line. And the ball just ends up eating her up and takes her to the fence. Elam rounding third, never stopped, never pumped the brakes. She knew she was going to second. As soon as she saw the ball pass the left fielder out there for Houston. Third hit of the season for Elam. Taria Coleman now, a freshman, stands in. Freshman getting an opportunity here to get some comfort in the box. Second at bat of the season for Taria Coleman. Boyd put a little zip on that rise ball there, but. Good for Coleman to lay off and, and, and be composed in the box later in the game, getting her chance. That's over the inside for a strike. A homecoming for Coleman. She's from Houston, went to C.E. King High School. Being patient at the plate, being selective, making sure she's going for something she likes. She's got a calm, calm aura about her. That's the way she is going to be in there. And, and, and make sure she takes one for a ride. Lots of power in her swing. Line drive off the glove of Boyd into center field. Elam will be waved in. Strong throw from Howie. Close play, but Elam is safe. 
Coleman, her first college hit, and it comes in her hometown of Houston. What a moment for Coleman standing on second base. We said it right there, all that power, she sees one. I think it's a third pitch in a row that she saw. Look just like that down the middle, near the knees. Who are we at here? Boom, right down the middle, big mistake from Boyd there, and she took it for a ride straight to center field. Howie in center, good throw at home, just not in time. First hit, first RBI for the C.E. King High School graduate. She also played three years of varsity basketball. The number five player in the class last year. Extra inning softball. Multi-sport athletes. You'll hear a lot of the college scouts talking about the, the, the pros of, of, of letting the younger players jump around from, from sport to sport. That athleticism is just something, you know, it's something you, it's rare to come by, you know, not making the girls pick what do you want to do, this or that. Let them play it. Let them experience what their bodies are capable of and what they can do. Here it is again, keeping her eye on that ball. The pitcher tried to get her hand in the way and just kind of got her fingers flicked at the top there. Doesn't seem like too tough of an injury, but umpire's allowing her to get a few pitches in and make sure she's okay. The right, the pitching hand for Boyd. Natural reaction, trying to defend yourself and make a play. Oh, you can imagine, I mean, 43 foot mound, you wind up, you deliver that pitch and you got a hitter like Coleman, drive one right back at you. That, that, that's a quick reaction time. That was a nice pitch away from Brito, tailing away as it crossed the zone. That's right, maybe a little drop curve there. Getting just comfortable, probably one of her better pitches that she's more comfortable with um, to start back up after getting that pitching hand a little irritated from, from trying to defend herself against that hard line drive. Just high, one and one on Brito. Got it, a little high coming into the plate there, but you, got, you can't help but wonder if that hand's still bothering her a little bit. Just two pitches in. We'll see if she can settle in. Two and one. Still searching for her strike here. Good eye from Brito, it's three balls and a strike. Looking at the patience from Brito, she's had a day so far with you know, being at the plate and, and impacting this team, working her way in and from, from maybe not as much time in the past and, and, and here she is getting the opportunity and, and taking full advantage of and finding her way again back on base for the Oklahoma Sooners. First and second for Grace Green. Grace Green getting another opportunity at the plate to, to move some runners around. Inside for ball one. Coach Gasso for the Oklahoma Sooners just showing the faith in all of these uh, substitutions and pinch hitters in the game. Put them in there in the pressure situations, regardless of the score, regardless of this the situation of the overall outcome of the game, but runners in, in scoring position and still challenging your hitters to, to make something happen of it. See the ball, track it in, and play loose, but let's perform in these pressure moments. Great competition to, to get into as a player coming off of the bench. Off the end of the bat to third. Trying for the tag, then throwing to first. That's good timing at third base from Janiah Thomas. That clock always ticking to the hot corner. <laughs> Has to move quick. Luckily that ball came off hot. Look at the playfulness between Coleman and Thomas at, at third base. You'd have to think both Houston natives maybe seeing each other on the travel ball route here in Houston, Texas. But quick thinking from Janiah Thomas and having that clock in her head. You're exactly right from, okay, can I go for this tag? or? So I need to get it out of my hand, and her clock was right. 
Mackenzie Donahue now. No doubt they know each other. Taria Coleman from Houston. She played for the Houston Astros RBI softball team. Led them to two MLB RBI titles. Of course, RBI, the reviving baseball inner cities. Have a ball for Texas Impact Gold. Donahue out to right. Holsey underneath it. Makes the catch. Taria Coleman tags up. Scores a run. The throw goes back to second. 13 to nothing, Oklahoma. Donahue, another sacrifice fly. Good ball there for the Oklahoma Sooners. You know, performing in the moment. That's all you need. You're under two outs. You got runners in scoring position. Good job of Coleman parking on third base with the tag and, and making it easy to trot right on into home plate. Getting the ball in. There was a little confusion as who continued to round first base as she was out and the ball was caught and kind of trot the long route back to the dugout. Some confusion for the defense, but no issues there from the umpires. Jada Coleman with two down in the top of the fifth. Takes the ball, or takes a strike. Jada Coleman performing so well in this number two spot. We've had pinch hitters all the way around her in that 7 8 9, 8 9 1 position, but she's staying consistent there in that number two spot. Just so valuable to have, just sprinkled in the lineup. Finding a way to get on base, whether a walk or a hit or a little poke through the infield here and there. It's three and one. They've drawn nine walks today. Coleman, two of them, and it's a chess match. These pitching staffs that have to face Oklahoma, they look at the video, they plan, they have an idea of what to do, but Oklahoma in the end is in the driver's seat. At some point, the pitchers have to come into the zone. <laughs> That's right. If, if, if. I went to the backstop. Burrito holds a third. If the Oklahoma lineup is able to hold off and, and and not get too hungry in terms of chasing pitches that are not for them, then absolutely, they gotta come to them. Jocelyn Allo, a line drive home run to left. Her home run number 93, and then to right center field, very low, great power over the batter's eye. Two home runs in this game, two home runs earlier today against McNeese, and the one finger signifying the one home run she needs to tie Lauren Chamberlain, the former Oklahoma star, for the all-time Division I career home run record. What a stat line on the day. Regardless of the record that we're, that she is inching so close to, two home runs, a single hit by pitch, four RBIs. Look at the, the manufactured, the output put out by Jocelyn Allo today. pitcher here for Houston. Hannah Blinko, a true freshman. How about this? Her debut is going to come against Jocelyn Allo, who's trying to tie Lauren Chamberlain for the all-time home run record. What a moment to come into. Collegiate debut coming in. Tall player, 5'10". At the pitcher's mound, something different for the Houston lineup. They like the, the shorter athletic spoken girls, but she's coming in, a force to be reckoned with. Getting comfortable here yet to take the mound for Houston, but oh man, has she been putting in the work at practice coming from Coach Vesley earlier this week. Though she hasn't been, hasn't gotten the call yet, Coach Vesley was very transparent saying that for her team, they were going to try to work in. Uh, some of these new pitchers, and, and here's the call. She gets the tap, and what a moment to be brought into. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see how she performs here. Let go from Georgetown High School, Georgetown, Texas, near Austin. Facing Jocelyn Allo. Lauren Chamberlain set the record in 2015. A chance for another Sooner to tie it seven years later. Little delay here. 
being sure the, the signs and the wristbands are all correct. And everybody's on the same page for the Houston Cougar pitching staff. Allo's ready. Up and in for a ball. Getting a feel for the mound here. Popped up to second. Hannah Blinko wins that battle, her first out as a college softball pitcher retires Jocelyn Allo and keeps her at 94. Made quick work of that one. What a moment and she prevailed. On to the last of the fifth. Oklahoma leading 13 nothing. Bottom of the fifth at the Houston Classic. 13-0 Oklahoma, Matt Peterson with Jalen Baldridge, the former Houston infielder. And that was a fun showdown there. Anna Blinko in her first hitches as a Division I softball player, true freshman from Georgetown, facing the soon-to-be all-time career home run leader, Jocelyn Allo, and the first battle goes to the freshman. <laughs> That's right, what a moment. To, to get put into the game for, and you saw she was all smiles when she got out there, and the dugout was on her side in terms of Houston, and uh, made quick work. One, two, pop up. All O's back to the dugout, and we changed sides here. Nicole May kept the unearned run streak intact for Oklahoma, yet to allow an earned run. Closing in on nine games into the season, she entered with the bases loaded and one out behind Macy McAdoo last inning, and she had two strikeouts. To throw in a one-hitter against Houston, she'll try to close out this game against Katie Ray Brown, eight, nine, and one due up for Houston here in the fifth. Katie Ray Brown stepping into the box, hoping to stay composed and just make a little bit of contact and trust, trust the practice and just kind of shorten the game up a little bit for her, get on base. For Nicole May, we mentioned last year, she pitched game one against Florida State, but she had a, another pressure pack game in the elimination setting against James Madison earlier in the tournament. Ray Brown out to right. And the catch made out there. And the new right fielder who replaced Jocelyn Alla. Zero. Riley, Riley Boone, who started the game earlier. She's back in right. Nicole May, it's hard to believe, just a sophomore, but with so much experience and so much command in the circle. The performance from her yesterday was A+. Plus. It, you know, chef's kiss to her. I mean, it was just insane how she was able to 
just control the play, control the game, and do so efficiently. She hit the zone, like we said, not taking, not wasting any time with balls, going to the zone and trusting your defense to be who they are. Former James Madison had the shock of the tournament beating Oklahoma game one. An elimination game a few days later, three and a third innings, no runs, two hits, six strikeouts to keep Oklahoma alive. James Madison shocking the world last season in the Women's College World Series and really the postseason tournament all together off the back of their incredible pitcher and team leader, Odyssey Alexander. Can imagine what all she went through and to get to that moment and shut down a team like Oklahoma in game one of the College World Series. And but it also just shows the, the resilience and adversity for Oklahoma to come right back and hoist that championship trophy up at the end. Behind third from Holsey. Johns gave chase. It's one ball, two strikes. Nicole May had a complete game win. Game one of a Super Regional against Washington last year. All of these pressure pack moments for a true freshman. Holsey bounces to the right side. Bobbled and Holsey beats it out. Donahue's playing second base now. She misplayed it. And Holsey's speed gets her to first base. Well, here you go. Now you have an opportunity to see how Oklahoma's defense will back will, will come back from you know a small miscue like that. Well, they allow it to kind of hang over them. And will Houston, with this Houston lineup, take advantage of that and, and do some trickster things? Or what do we see next from here? Oklahoma defense has a ton of experience with the adversity and proven that they can do so. But gosh, I'm not sure they've seen it so much in the first two weekends of play this season. So we'll see if we're able to shake it off at second base for the Oklahoma Sooners uh, in Donahue. Want to know on Bethany Bush? Elam's over at first. Donahue's at second. Alyssa Brito is the new shortstop for Oklahoma. John's the only remaining infielder from the starting lineup. Nugent's behind the plate. She replaced. Hanson a couple innings ago, the outfield is Coleman in left, Rhea Coleman, Jada Coleman's in center, and Jocelyn Allo was in right, it's now Boone out there in right. So we're gonna miss from Bethany Bush, good pitch in over the shoot tops from Nicole May. Tricky pitch, sure it looked good leaving the hand, but just sinks right in on that inside corner for, for Bethany Bush on the left-hand side of the plate. After this game, we'll be back 5.30, Texas State against Houston. Texas State beat McNeese earlier today. Another regional team coming to Houston this weekend. Texas State was at the Austin Regional last year. They beat Oregon and lost to Texas and then lost a rematch with Oregon. A ton of competitive play for Texas State coming into this tournament. Already, each of these teams facing some big, big competitions, some big challenges leading into this weekend. Just allowing each of their rosters to hold up the measuring stick and see where they get their notch. And uh, Texas State proving a good performance. Not enough to etch out Oregon, but still a great performance coming out of them earlier this week. Thomas stays alive. Ricky Woodard, the head coach, said it's maybe the hardest schedule they've had in her 21 seasons. Well, we're learning now that you know, with the postseason and the selection shows and all of that, there's a recipe to this, right? You can have a great record even on the, the football side. You can have a great record, but you got to have the opponents to get there. Nicole May strikes out Janiah Thomas to end it. Excellence from Nicole May. One and two thirds innings out of the bullpen, four strikeouts. Another shutout for Oklahoma, and Nicole May. The back end of a great start from Jordy Ball. And Oklahoma, another shutout victory, 13 to nothing. They've now outscored opponents 76 to two on the season.
Oklahoma just taking control big time on both sides of the ball. Pitching, offense, defense, handling their business each time it's their turn to come up. Jocelyn Allo, two more home runs, a four homer day between the games against McNeese, or up uh, McNeese and Houston. She has one shy of the all time record set by Lauren Chamberlain. 94 career homers for Jocelyn Allo. For Jalen Baldridge, I'm Matt Peterson saying so long. Another win for Oklahoma over Houston.